Hi, my name is Kirk Hamilton, your host of the Staying Healthy Today Show. I'm an author, health educator, and practicing physician assistant for more than 30 years, and also host of this show. And this is a show where we bring you key experts in the fields of nutrition, prevention, integrative, and lifestyle medicine. We review medical literature, and we also review case studies. Today's show topic is, what is the real longevity diet of the Okinawan centenarians? And I've been trying to get a hold of uh, Dr. Craig Wilcox for almost two and a half years now to do an interview and trying to find out exactly what do these long living elders, what did they eat and what do they eat now? Uh, because there's a lot of, um, I don't know, kind of misinformation. I hear all kinds of things. And I've been following the work. I've read the, these two books written by uh, the the Wilcox brothers and Dr. Makoto Suzuki, who initially was the principal investigator of the centenarian study, the Okinawan centenarian study, which has been going on since 1975-ish, so almost 40 years now. And now Bradley and and uh, Craig Wilcox have taken over as co-principal investigators, and they wrote those two books. And the 2001 was the Okinawa program, and then 2004 was the Okinawa diet program. So. Diet is one of the fundamental things that we want to look at in a lifestyle. There's social structure, there's physical activity, there's environment, um, there's health care. But diet is the foundation for much of the longevity results of the Okinawan centenarian. So I'm just going to go through quickly because this is an hour interview I did with him, a podcast um, from here to Okinawa. I was uh, in Sacramento, California and did it to uh, Okinawa, California. I mean, Okinawa. <laughs> Okinawa in Japan. So, but here's some highlights. I'm just going to go down the foods and do it off the top of my head. Number one, this is a vegetable-driven, plant-based diet. Small amounts of animal food. In the early years, in the lean years after the war, there was hardly any uh, animal food. Uh, maybe a little pork once in a while, a little fish if you live near the ocean. Um, now there's a little bit more, but it's still predominantly a plant-based diet of those two uh, entities, pork and fish. And obviously the pork back then was free range. Um, and so animal foods are low. Vegetables are the biggest part of the diet. Um, and vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables. There's lots of color, orange, yellows, but especially green leafy vegetables, lots of different varieties of vegetables, and sweet potato. The sweet potato is actually almost a sacred food. Benny Emo was uh, the sweet potato that kind of got the, the Okinawans through the really, really hard times way back when. It turns out it's very rich in fiber, very rich in carotenoids, uh, very nutrient-dense, powerful, uh, healthy food, and it's still part of uh, the diet. Fruit, not eat so much fruit, a little citrus, a few other fruits, but not a whole lot of fruit do the centenarians uh, eat. Uh, beans, um, obviously, soy, we're going to get to that in a minute. Yes, soybeans, edamame, and also uh, azuki beans uh, are, are a certain um, bean that they eat. Uh, grains, they definitely eat grains. Originally, they ate the, the poor poor farmer, poor fisherman's diet of, they had brown rice or unpolished rice. Now, white rice has slid in more, but in, in the olden days, it was brown rice. Um, now, there's a little bit of um, other grains, millet, there's a few mixtures in the modern diet, but, but rice is still the staple, and then if there's noodles, there'd be a, a wheat-type noodle. And, there's a, and, and this is a carbohydrate-rich diet. This is not a low-carb diet diet, but they're unprocessed carbohydrates. There's very little sugar or processed food uh, in the Okinawan, the traditional elder's diet. Now we're separating the elder's diet from the modern diet of their children and grandchildren who live in the same area. And I'm going to say that now because they're getting rampant chronic diseases, obesity, diabetes, heart disease at alarming rates because they're not eating close to the same diet. They're eating the, the progressive, very fast foodish Western diet, and that's the results that they're getting. So getting back to the the diet, we've talked about vegetables, we talked about fruit, we talked about animal food, uh, very little dairy. In fact, in the olden days, there's hardly any dairy. Now there's a little bit more dairy, but very little dairy food. Um, let's talk about uh, oils. They do use oils. They're not an oil-free society. It, uh, soy oil and uh, more canola uh, oil and a mixture of both. And they do it basically in a stir fry, but it's not like pouring it all over for big salad dressings and, and pouring oil all over everything. They do a little bit in a stir fry. So there is some oil in the diet. Nuts and seeds, not, not a, a lot of nuts and seeds. Uh, cashews have come in recently. Peanuts have been there uh, a while and sesame seed, but not uh, a lot of nuts or seeds. Uh, dairy foods, um, 
well, there wasn't dairy animals back back then, and, and, and really dairy is not a big part of their diet at all. You can see it in the supermarkets, but that's for more of the, the, the youth coming up, so to speak. So dairy foods aren't there. Eggs once in a while, but not too often. So this is a, uh, you know, Dr. Wilcox really emphasized, this is a very plant-rich diet. Now here's the controversial one that I get all the time. In fact, I got a patient today walked in and go, I just came in and heard a neurologist uh, Dr. X talk about uh, soy foods as being the worst foods in the world for whatever. Now I just got finished interviewing <laughs> Dr. Wilcox and asked him on that point because I've seen it in his videos. I've seen him stir frying tofu and saying tofu and soy products are probably used here more in Okinawa than anywhere in the world. And they have very low incidence of hormone dependent cancer. So I asked him that question. And essentially whole soy foods are eaten every day. Edamame, miso, yes tofu, not all the soy foods are fermented. I get that question all the time that the Okinawans only eat fermented soy foods. Yes, they eat fermented soy foods, but they eat non ones. So they eat miso, natto, um, uh, tofu, tempeh, edamame, um, and soy milk. I actually thought soy milk was uh, more of a modern creation, but um, Dr. Wilcox told me no, that soy, food, soy milk is. So soy foods are eating every single day in Okinawa. Uh, the other food that I almost forgot about that's critically important is seaweed. Seaweed in varying shapes and forms is eaten in, in, in every day in Okinawa. That is a staple. So if there's anything harmful about soy, let's say there is, and they eat generally non-GMO uh, soy, but if there is, there must be something in the Okinawan diet that negates it because they're eating it a lot and they're still eating it every day. So those are some of the highlights. Um, I encourage you to listen. There's a link here uh, in the description below this video to the, the audio interview I did with Dr. Uh, Wilcox. Listen to it. I've got some links uh, to some other videos that are shorter um, and to their books. But the reason that the Okinawans are so important to study, we have a chronic disease epidemic in the United States. This culture, grows into their 80, 90, 100s, and they're vibrant, they're living, they're participating, and they're delaying our chronic diseases. They're not having the Alzheimer's, they're not having the Parkinson's, they're not having the dementias, they're not having heart disease, they're not having diabetes, and they're gonna die out someday, okay? Because the youth are not living the same lifestyle and they're getting all the opposite diseases. So it is lifestyle, it is not genetics. That is the big fallacy. In the same area, same location, you have the elders living, and you have the, the youth living. These are getting chronic diseases, the children of these elders and their grandchildren, and the elders are living the same lifestyle or close to it that they did for many, many years, and they're preventing these diseases. So we need to learn from them and bring these basic concepts, these blue zone concepts back to industrialized countries like the United States and incorporate them into our healthcare system because we, do not, we don't need to have 75% of the illnesses or 80% of the illnesses that we do. And we can put that money elsewhere and do good things. So my name is Kirk Hamilton. This is the Staying Healthy Today show. Go to my, uh, the podcast at stayinghealthytoday.com. They're also uploaded into iTunes. That interview will be. Sign up for my health letter. I'll talk to you soon, and you have a fabulous day.